Hi, welcome to our YouTube channel. Anyone can be a math person. Make sure that you click the subscribe button below to get video updates and comment if you have any topics you'd like to see us covered that we haven't already. So let's look at an example. In general, if we know that pi radians is equal to 180 degrees, then what is one radian equal to and what is one degree equal to? Well, because I've already got radians and degrees in my statement on the first line, let me write this up above, pi radians is equal to 180 degrees. If I'm curious about one radian, what I'm really trying to figure out is how do I turn that pi radians into one? And the answer is that if I divide it by itself, in other words, if I divide by pi, pi divided by pi is one. But if I divide by pi on the left, I have to divide by pi on the right. And so I end up saying that one radian is equal to 180 degrees over pi radians. Now, I can show you the mathematics for the second part, but I'll let you do that on your own. And I believe that what you're going to find out is that one degree is just the reciprocal of what we just found. So we're gonna say that this is equal to pi over 180 degrees. And I hope that that feels intuitive to you. So here's the example. Convert each of the following degree angles into radians. So we're starting with zero degrees, and zero degrees represents moving nowhere. And so zero degrees, whether it's degrees or in radians, is just going to be zero. Now, of course, if we go all the way around that circle, back to 360 degrees, 360 degrees would represent two pi. Now, the other angles, um, some of them require you to do some computations, but the ones that are on the borders of the quadrants, in other words, 90 degrees, 180 degrees, and 270 degrees, I think we already know something about. Um, for example, 180 degrees represents half of a circle, and so we can figure out the radians by simply taking half of two pi. Half of two pi is equal to pi. So 180 degrees is equal to pi. 90 degrees represents half of that space. And so we say that that's equal to one half of pi or pi over two. And 270 degrees is three fourths of two pi and three force of 2 pi would give us 6 pi over 4 or 3 pi over 2. Maybe an easier way to think of that is that 270 degrees represents 1 and a half pi's and 1 and a half is 3 halves. All right, now let's go back to the first quadrant. After 0 degrees, we see a 30 degree angle. So I want to convert 30 degrees, 30 degrees into radians. So I want to multiply that by one of the ratios that I saw up above, either 180 degrees over pi or pi over 180 degrees. And I'm going to choose the one that has degrees on the bottom because that degree on the bottom will cancel with my 30 degrees, leaving me with the radians that I want. So that means I have to multiply by pi over 180. And you'll notice a couple of things here. The degrees are going to cancel out. And if you can imagine dividing the numerator and the denominator both by 10, we would get that the zeros are also going to go away. And I'm left with, let's see here, three pi over 18. And if I divide numerator and denominator by three, I get the reduced radian measure of pi over six. So 30 degrees is, let's see here, 30 degrees is pi over six. Now what about a 45 degree angle? We could do the computations on this, but we might also want to say that uh, 45 degrees represents halfway between 
0 and 90 degrees, or maybe between 0 and pi over 2. So what is 1 half of pi over 2? Well, in mathematics, oftentimes the word of means to multiply. So I'm going to take 1 half, and I'm going to multiply it by pi over 2. And multiplying the numerators and multiplying the denominators, I see that 45 degrees is equal to pi over 4. And finally, we're left with the 60 degree angle, at least in the first quadrant. And I'm going to take 60 degrees, and I'm going to multiply it by the thing that will get rid of my degrees. So this is going to be the same scenario as the 30 degree angle. Um, I'll multiply, or excuse me, divide numerator and denominator both by 10. That will cancel out or get rid of my zeros. And I'm left with, let's see, 6 pi over 18, which if I divide numerator and denominator by 6, gets me pi over 3. So 60 degrees is pi over 3. Now, I'll let you try the rest of these on your own, but because of the symmetry that's involved with each one of these quadrants, um, I want you to consider that as you move along, but also practice doing the arithmetic that's involved with it. Um, go ahead and pause the video and try this one on your own, and then on the next slide you should see the answers. All right, so let's take a look at this completed unit circle and see if you came up with what I came up with. We had already done the first quadrant, and we had taken care of um, not only that, but some of the angle measures on the axes. Your job was to come up with the radian measure of the second and the third um, and the fourth quadrant. Now, all of these angle measures should be memorized, um, degrees and radians. It seems like a daunting task, but there's actually um, a way to go about remembering this without actually having to memorize it. In other words, if you can pay attention to what's going on in the first quadrant um, and the symmetry of the circle, along with some uh, similarities with the fractions, I think that you'll have an easy time. Let me show you what I am talking about. If I take a look at this 30 degree angle and notice that it was 5 pi over 6 and then here's 5 pi over 6 and 7 pi over 6 and 11 pi over 6, um, why are these all something over 6? Well, these angles formed a rectangle. And all of the radian measures on that rectangle are all something over 6. And the reason why that is, is because they all share the same reference angle. Remember, a reference angle is the angle measure from the terminal side of the angle, um, the acute angle, from that side to the horizontal axis. So if I take a look at this angle, and this angle, and this angle, and this angle, all of those angles have a measure of pi over 6. So if I wanted to, let's say I didn't know what the radian measure was, um, if I just had this 60 degree angle, and I noticed that it had a let's see here, a reference angle of pi over 3, I would know that another angle that has a reference angle of pi over 3 would have probably a radian measure that is in thirds. I hope that makes sense. Um, we can continue and look at these guys and notice that, yes, a rectangle is being formed. Oh, this is getting to be a mess but I hope that you get the idea. And the same thing can be said for the 45 degree or the pi over 4 angles. They will also have the same reference angle, and therefore their radian measure will all be in increments of fourths.